Welcome to Capture the World with D. Interviews with companies and individuals to learn more about digitally capturing the built world. Video, drone, 3D tours, pictures, panoramas, and more. And now your host, a social influencer and community activist, D. Johnson. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Capture the World with Dee. I'm your host, Dee Johnson. My guest today is the head of support at Garden Gnome, the makers of Pano 2 VR, a powerful software package that converts your panoramic or 360 photos and videos into interactive virtual experiences. For any of you who know anything about Cockney slang, my guest has a lot of bottle and glass. So without further ado, please help me welcome Martin Hopkins. Hi, Martin. Thanks for joining me today. Hi, Dee. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> Do you like my Cockney slang? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So let's start out by having you introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about who Martin is and then tell us a little bit about how Pano 2 VR came to be. Right. Well, first and foremost, I'm Martin. I'm generally everyone sees me on support. Um, we are a team and this team, uh, Garden Gnome, was uh, developed and, and all started with a guy called Thomas, Thomas Rauscher, um, who's over in Austria. I am just one of a team member and the one pushed to do the interview today, <laughs> you, which is the, fine. You got that. You pulled the short straw. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But, okay. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So the company's Garden Gnome Software, or it's Garden Gnome. Um, basically, how it all started was there was a need for Thomas um, back in 2005 to create QuickTime VR files from his panoramas. So he did that. He created um, an application called Pano2 QT VR, which is a bit of a mouthful because at the time it was just QuickTime files. And with this, um, he brought in transformations. We could do mirror balls and things like that. And it was a nice little application. And then within uh, uh, Pano2 QT VR, he, he, there was a need for flash. So we created what we called the flash pack, which gave us the flash outputs. Um, this came very, very popular. This was very, very popular. And back in 2007 was the first uh, literation of Pano 2 VR. So we dropped the QT to uh, VR because this now had um, QuickTime and Flash. And with this, we also brought in the patch editor, the patch tool. Um, I'll, I'll show you these things later, but it basically before this patch tool, you needed to convert your images to cube faces and touch them up in your mm -hmm. desired photo editor. But the patch tool made this a lot simpler. As I say, I'll, I'll demonstrate that when we get to Pano 2 VR. Um, so that was in 2007. Um, we also supported um, 360 video panoramas uh, with this, uh, so in flash. And then um, in, as I say, it was actually Pano 2 or Pano 2 VR version 2.1, we brought in the patch editor. I'm just trying to keep the timeline. I've got some notes written, but trying to remember it as well. Um, so that came in the patch editor. And then 2010 with Pano 2 VR version 3, we brought in um, HTML5 support for your iPhones and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then in 2013, um, it, we, we were one of the first to demonstrate um, HTML5 multi-resolution. Uh, which was uh, quite a thing and, and still is. And that's one of the things that we're really strong on um, with, you know, gigapixel panoramas and things like that. And um, through the development, we've added things to Pano 2 VR, such as the, our animation output editor and uh, our, our, our animation editor that allows you to produce your um, auto rotate. So when you click a button rather than the panorama just spinning around, you can produce what you want the viewer to see and we can also export that as a standalone video um, for marketing purposes or whatever you want to use it for um, with this we also introduced our um, 
transformations as well. I'm not quite sure in the timeline where transformations comes in, but we've had it an awful long time. But basically what that does, it's an output that lets you to or, uh, or enables you to select a view from a spherical image that you'd like and you'd want to say print and then it allows you to print a high resolution image of that or copy of that particular image that you want. You can also transform it into, say, I don't know, the little planet. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Which people yeah. like plant, you know, <laughs> and put on the back wall of their office and all that sort of thing. So, yeah. And of course, with this, um, we can create um, all the preview images you need for, you know, um, I don't know, Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. Instagram, all of those other, you know, social media. So basically, the one tool allows you to create your panoramas. Um, create your virtual tours, output all your thumbnail images you need to, or export a uh, a video for helping the marketing of it. So that's, you know, basically the timeline. <laughs> and, and I'm sure if I've got that right, I'll get a ticket off later, but I'm sure I'm, <laughs> I've sort of got that right. But that's the timeline and, and basically where we are today with Pano 2 VR. Okay, so what is Pano 2 VR? Well, I'm glad you asked that, Dee. <laughs> <laughs> right, basically, Pano 2 VR is a desktop app. Um, as I said before, it's uh, it's a tour builder. Um, um, we also um, uh, a patch editor for patching. Um, we have a skin editor for enabling you to build skins. Um, basically, you can open up the editor, drop in like a, a photographer can draw a button in Photoshop, drop it into the skin editor and assign that button action so you can customise the look and the feel of the panorama. Mm -hmm. I think most players allow you to do that, but our skin editor is, you know, it's one of these where it's it's simple to use, but it allows you to get really deep if you want to. So if you want to throw code at it, you can, but you don't have to. We also have a toolbox that allows you just to double click and drag stuff in again mm -hmm. i'll i'll demonstrate that in a second um but then what pano 2 vr has as outputs is it allows you to output the virtual tour it allows you to output as we said um transformation so pictures from your panoramas it allows you to output um uh, mpeg4 videos um so video sequences from your virtual tours for marketing or whatever we also introduced um, uh, Google Street View. Um, uh, I did actually have it written down. Here we go. So back in 2017, we were the first, uh, I think one of the first or the first desktop applications to be um, Street View workflow ready. So we got the certification or certification from Google for that. So as one of our outputs, it allows you to upload your projects to Google. Um, which is quite cool. And then, you know, we also have um, uh, our stereo as well. So you can put in stereo images mm -hmm. and that's good for your head mounted displays. Mm -hmm. And one of the cool features of the patch editor, which, um, you know, I demonstrated one to, uh, once in one of our videos and it's, it was quite interesting to see the reaction for these people that get involved in stereo is that you can extract a patch from both of the images side by side. And what that's really good for is obviously, I'm not sure if you know or, or, or your viewers know, but when you take stereo images, you're basically taking two images slightly offset for the distance mm -hmm. of your eyes to give you that 3D effect. It's not 3D, but a 3D effect. Right. But sometimes you can get a slight bit of movement in one image and not the other. So if you patch those, you see the two and you see the differences and then something like Photoshop, you can use the clone brush and get them both perfect. So when you view the stereo, you don't see this blur. It's nice and crystal clear. So these are all the all the things that Pano 2 VR can do. Um, basically, we like to refer to it as the you know the Swiss Army knife for panoramas. Yeah, so, it does do a lot. <laughs> it, it does, and you know to be honest, I'm I'm really keen to you know, start showing you examples okay. and things like that right. because you know it's. You know, the proof is in the eating, you know, and one of the things I've done is it's all too easy to go to our website and look at all the examples and show you what it can do. So what I've done is I've gone through all of our Facebook posts where people have um, posted their own projects. And so basically I want to show you what people are doing with our software Yeah. So there's and some, all the different things. There's so, a lot of really cool stuff. <laughs> so yeah, why don't you go ahead and show us? Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. So let's do this. Um, share. 
Okay. So that should... There. So do you see my screen? Yes. Right, okay. So the first thing um, really we want to look at, I suppose, is virtual tours. So I have some links I've um, already set up. So let's just scroll to the first one. Now this is from our website. So you can see the, the first thing it does is the little planet flying, which yeah. everybody's used to seeing. Um, we have some, you know, the transitions going from pano to pano. And we can have things like pop-up images, um, you know, information boxes uh, with scrollers. So you can, you know, put in lots of in information. So this is basically, you know, something that's quite a basic thing to build. But, you know, it allows you, with our skin editor, as I said, you know, you can build custom skin so here on this particular version we've got a google map that's embedded into the tour and not only that we can overlay on the google map so you can see we've got custom map pins we've got ticks to show you where we've been and of course when we hover over them we've got all the thumbnails which again is not something you normally see in a google map within a tour but it's just something that we can do so that gives you that little bit more um i don't know wow factor for your customer you know um the other thing is, you know, uh, automatically we can generate um, thumbnail menus and things like that. I want to go back to the start because one of the things we touched on was this animation editor. Again, I'll show you what it looks like, but at the end result of the animation editor is you can take a standard virtual tour like this and you can produce what you want people to see. So here I've got the um, auto rotate button. So I'm going to click this. And then what's going to happen is the panorama is going to follow a set path. So it's going to have a look round. It's going to show you the, um, uh, the view around where you are. It's going to then rotate back to the door and then transition to it. So if we just let it go for a bit and you'll see what's going to happen. So it's not the standard, you know, click the button, it just rotates and then it might go to it. You can completely produce this. And once you've done it, as I said, you can go into our animation editor um, and set this up, but, but then you can go to the output section and say, I want this as an MPEG, uh, an MPEG-4 video right. for, say, a marketing campaign. So if I close this, what I can do is do exactly this. So this was this is quite a low res because I needed to build it quite quickly, but this is it. This is the MPEG version from our um, animation editor or, or, or the animation output. Um, so basically this is now ready for, you know, your social media campaigns. I mean, if you could think of this as a property um, that you're trying to sell within your Facebook page or Instagram, of course, Instagram can't handle HTML5 panoramas. So you can build this sort of MPEG-4 video and use this in your marketing campaigns. Um, I keep looking to you because I've got you over there. So I'm sorry I'm not looking at the camera. But so, yeah, so if you see me dart over that way, that's because it's, you know, that's where I'm seeing you. But yeah, so you can see you've, you've, you've got this video playing and yeah. we've got, well, you know, yeah. So it's brilliant for your, you know, marketing campaigns and things like that. So that's, that's basically... That's like the highlight reel and getting a video from the highlight reel from a matter. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we've got a um, another tour here. This was built um, by a guy called Rod, who's one of our um, uh, customers. Um, I know him quite well, so I think he'll be chuffed to see this. Um, uh, we're demonstrating one of his, but here you can see this is a, a skin because obviously with this with the skin editor. Um, We've got people within our group, or say within our group, but within our forum and our Facebook pages that build custom skins for people. Mm -hmm. And this is such a skin. Mm -hmm. So this was, wasn't developed by Rod. This was, he bought this from ah. somebody else. You just put it into Pano 2 VR and it, it generates all of the thumbnail images for you. And you can, you know, see what room you want to go to, click on a button and it, it fades in. So this is very much a custom skin and this is for his tours. So basically all Rod did here was put his panoramas in, link them up and then applied the skin. The skin then that does everything else. So another him. thing so you could do is if you use Pano 2 VR and you become good at creating skins, you can sell those. Absolutely. And it's, it's, I mean, we, we don't have a shop per se, and it's, we sort of say to people that if you want to sell your own skins, then you can, we don't have any problems with that. Mm. I mean, in actual fact, you know, you asked the question about how did I get started? That's how I got started oh. back in 2008. 
um, before bumping into Thomas that, you know, I was, I started my own little good business, um, you know, uh, and I started building skins and yeah. then helping people on the, in, in the forum. And then over time I was, must've been quite useful because then I joined Garden Gnome and <laughs> I've been there ever since 2010. So, so this yeah. is a great project for like a college kid. Cause that's what my kid did when he was in college. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's, um, yeah, this is uh, this is quite a good tour. So that's cool. Anyway, so that's that's a tour. Um, we've got um, cruise ships. I mean, uh, here's another one from Rod. Um, I like this was London, and this one's got some ambient sound. I don't know if you can hear this. Yeah, Bond is great. But, um, <laughs> you know, and it's I'll turn the sound off actually. But yeah, within the skin you can build like sound controls. You can have volume controls and all of this sort of thing. And here we've got, this is actually one of the skins that come with Pano 2 VR. The only modification with this is that he's put a little logo in the top uh -huh. and that's it. Um, but this is like one of the skins that come with Pano 2 VR. Um, you know, and here we've got, you can just see the lens flare and as you look at the sun, it gets brighter. So uh -huh. that's a, a brightening effect or a blinding effect as we call it. So yeah, there's, you know, as, as so far as, but, you know, as far as building turns, uh, uh, the tours is concerned, we've, you know, it's got all the features that you would expect. Um, but what we've also got is the, you know, the, the skin editor, which is something that, you know, is quite powerful. As I said before, if I open up Pano 2 VR, this is what it looks like the first time. I know we've seen some examples, but this is what it looks like when you first open it up. When you first open it up, you've got this welcome screen. Um, if you need help from this welcome screen, you get the getting started. If I click this, it takes you to our website and you have all of the videos that are relevant for this version. The very extensive set of Absolutely. videos. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, there's lots and lots of videos yeah. there. Yeah. So it covers most subjects. You know, we, 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 you know we, we try and pin down a video for what you want. So rather than sort of saying, I want to learn about the skin and there's one big video for yeah. the skin editor. Yep. We try and pin down individual sections so it makes it easier yeah. for you to find. Um, we've also have our documentation link that takes you through to our docs page. Here we've got a cut down version of the of the videos, um, so how to patch and things like that, and then all the documentation on the side here. So you know there there is a lot of info here. Yeah. Um, you know, as you know, as we were talking about earlier, you know, having you know quite a large customer base, and you know, are you swamped on support? Well. We're busy, uh, which I'm pleased to say, but because of all this, you know, the, 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 the way the website's organized and our documentation's organized, a lot of people can help themselves. And of course, the other thing is, is that we have an awful lot of, you know, great customers that like to help each other in the forums and the Facebook pages. So, you know, that's, that's another good thing. Right. Okay. So this is, as I say, Pano 2 VR when we first open it. Um, I'm going to open a, uh, the skin editor. So basically, if I click the skin button, here it is. It's a blank skin, and you can add your buttons to this. I'm going to add a rectangle um, to the skin, but this could have quite easily been a button. And you can then double click, and you can see how the interface starts to work. So if this was a button to say, I don't know, um, let's do a, a mouse click. So you can see the source. We can either have click, double click, press, mouse over, all of these different things that we can affect this element with, but because it's a button, it's going to be a click. Um, I'm going to look at panorama movement and under panorama movement, I can get this button to, you know, pan it left, right, tilt it up or down or zoom in, zoom out. So this button could be any one of those. And then we can give it a speed. If I click OK, I'm going to open up a preview and you can see the panorama here. It's this is a blank preview. There's no pano in there, um, but you can see the pan tilt field of view when I click the button you can see that we're panning around there. It's probably not the best um, example. So the best thing to do, I think, is to introduce some panoramas. So I'm going to show you the speed of Pano 2 VR. This is, um, let's get rid of that lot and put that in the bin because this was uh, something I was working on earlier. But basically, this is five um, panoramas that have got geolocation. I can just drag and drop. You can see how fast Pano 2 VR has loaded these up. It's populated the tour browser um, at the bottom. So these are all our input images and these are all our panoramas. So 
our claim to fame, if you like, is we've got a live preview in the middle. And this is what you work with is this live preview when you're doing anything. So if you wanted to add a lens flare for argument's sake, you'd spin it around till you find the sun. So it's just in this corner. You could select the lens flare tool, double click. And then from the properties, what, lens, what sort of lens flare do you want? Um, we also have uh, lens flares where you can actually change the color. So if you're in, I don't know, a nightclub where you've got green flashy lights, you could change the color of the lens flare to match the flashy lights in the panorama. So Very you know, powerful. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. there's lots of things going on there. So with that said, we've added our lens flare. I'm going to click and add the HTML5 output. So this is our panorama. Um, and I'm going to click the cog button to build it. So the first thing it's going to ask me is, do I want to save the project? Yes, I do. And then it's going to um, build the pano. There you go. So that's all built. Uh, this is the output. Of course, we've added no skin. There's no other way of moving from pano to pano. So to add a controller, we've got uh, a couple or a few here, but pano 2 vr ships with the silhouette skin and the simplex skin. If I select the simplex and publish this out, again, you don't need to worry about the skin editor. And you can see it appears. So very, very quickly, I could have dumped in five images or as many images as I want. We've got the skin editor and we can use the thumbnail menu to navigate around. So there's right. some preset skins that come with it. Absolutely. And even the preset skins have adjustments, um, which is if we use this little button here, it's called our skin configuration tool. And when we click this, we can do things like change the color of certain items, like the, the like the buttons. Mm -hmm. As an example, let's change the um, uh, button hotspot foreground to green. I can uh, show an information button. So if I um, if we just select this at the moment and see what's going on, you'll see that we've now changed the the buttons to green. Mm -hmm. um, but there's no information button there. Now I don't have any information in this project, but I will actually add the information button. So you see what this does. If I click OK, click the cog key. We've now got the information button in there. Yeah. So if Super, I had one, it's actually the user interface is pretty easy. Again, when you add a lot of features and functionality and, you know, customization, it's just a little bit more. Uh, there's a little bit higher learning curve. But once you learn it, it's it's so amazing all the things you can do. Absolutely. So, you know, as we said, this was our, you know, this is one of the pre-packaged skins. Mm -hmm. um, what we can do is um, select a brand new skin. And as I say, you could add your own, yep. uh, add your own graphics. You can get creative. Have, <laughs> Sky's absolutely. the limit, right? Yeah. Yeah. But we have what we call our skin component um, uh, toolbox. And when we click this, you have lots and lots of different elements. As an example, we've got different sorts of menus that you could add. We've even got a text to speech element. So if you want your, you know, your 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 panoramas to be accessible, you could, you know, get the panorama to use the computer's voice. So this is not using MP3s or anything like that. Mm -hmm. This is using the computer's voice to, you know, um, uh, yeah, talk. So you yep. could do like uh, panorama descriptions and things yeah. like that, or tell you what a, a label is on a button um, but basically with the um, components toolbox I could add a double click and I've added a hotspot with a preview I could close I'm going to save this um, so let's save it to the desktop and this was the folder so let's type in skin so that's my skin that I've built and now when I click the create panorama button you'll see that he says what have I done wrong I like these things, right? So skin, oh, I'll tell you what I've done wrong. I added a hotspot, right? But I've not added hotspots in the tour yet. Oh. <laughs> right, so you can see all of these grayed out versions. Now what these are is what we call ghost hotspots. This is these panoramas. I don't know if you can see here, but we've got little pictures of satellites and that's telling me that these panoramas have geo data. They've got they're, they're geo located. They've got GPS data. So and these grayed out hotspots are telling me where the where the other nodes are in relation of where I'm sitting right now. So we can use this to automatically add all of our point hotspots. Mm -hmm. So what I can do is go to the um, tour menu. 
automatic linking, sequential. Boom, you can see that this hotspot is now turned blue. It's an active hotspot. I've now added all the hotspots to this tour. Wow. So if I click the go button, here we go, the create the panorama button, you can see that we've got our hotspots with the preview image. Yeah, cool. Absolutely. So and easy. if you didn't <laughs> and if you didn't want a preview, we could just deselect it. And okay. you no longer have the preview, but it now shows the tool tip underneath. And the tool teeth is under uh, the, the, the tool tip is underneath. But if this was to be then be displayed on a mobile phone, that tool tip would automatically jump above it. So when you put your finger on it, you can still see the text. Cool. Yeah, so yep. it's there's, there's there's a lot of thought been put behind this little lot. So, but yeah, but so this is this is basically Pano Two VR like in its simplest form. Um, one of the other things I wanted to show because we touched on like the gigapixel bit, and I said that's you know that's one of our strengths. Now to give you an idea of this, if I look at this image, um, you'll see that this is this is huge. It's you know three hundred ninety seven gig. It's massive. Now, under normal circumstances, this would take an awful long time to load in any Panorama player or, or Panorama software. But what we've done is, um, let's just make that a little bit smaller so I can get to the file. But basically, if the image is correctly formatted, so it's, it's, it's a pyramid TIFF, we can read that data. So it cuts out all the loading. So when I drop it in, boom, that's it. It's loaded. It's ready to work with. Um, Photoshop would take minutes to load mm -hmm. this, um, but yeah, we can load this straight away. And just to prove a point that it is actually a gigapixel, um, we can just zoom in and zoom in and keep on zooming and keep on zooming until we see the people. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so, you know, this is, this is it. This is the speed. Now, whilst I've got this loaded, we saw uh, me do earlier, we added an HTML5 output. But as I said before, we have our transformation output. And that is um, basically that en enables me to create a still image or a thumbnail mm -hmm. to use in social media or to do whatever I want. So if I wanted a picture of this building, what I could do is right button click and set that as my default view just for pure speed. And then what we could do here is I can right button click, set that to be a larger image. That's the image I'm going to print. I could then set the file type. So let's just go, let's just go for a JPEG and then I could print this out. So, or not print it out, but I could then create the image for printing. So let's just, um, well, I'll do that now because it's a gigapixel. It may take a little bit longer, but, but basically we can create this and it can be at the full resolution or um, I can set whatever resolution mm -hmm. I want uh, within the software. So, you know, that's the, that's the transformation um, the output there. So, you know, very good. The other thing we can do with this is, um, I said to you before, we can set up um, like all your thumbnail images for social media, like Facebook and all of those. I think 1200 by 638 or something like that for mm -hmm. Facebook. Um, but you can actually set these up as an output and then save them as a template. So when you're doing your project and when you've done your project and you want then to and then you then want to, you know, publish this uh, or, or put a panorama on social media or something like that, you can click the button and then select um, a, a, a template. So I would have saved this output as a template, select it and just hit the 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 the, the cog button here, which is to create the output. And then that would create all of the different images that I needed. Um, the other thing we can do with Pano 2 VR is is if we go to the uh, menu, let's just move you out of the way there. Thank you. Um, we could then go to file and we can create a droplet. Now we did a webinar on this um, the other week. And basically a droplet is, it's an icon that sits on your desktop and literally you put all of your panoramas, all your images into a folder, you drop it onto the droplet and then the droplet either builds the tour or creates the thumbnails or we even tried it and it worked, created all of your um, animation MPEG-4 outputs as wow. well. So cool. you could do all that. So basically you could have a set of droplets to do a complete marketing campaign 
for any property you're trying to sell or something mm -hmm. like that. So you so could that's... you could set this up so that a real estate agent can take their own pictures and use this very easily. Absolutely. Quickly. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. Let's say we can have droplets or we can save templates. Okay. Um, Show us some more examples. Show us an example of like an educational one. An educational did. one. Right. Okay. I we've, we've got those. Hang on two seconds. We have got. We'll save my favorite for last. I have a favorite. We'll save that one for last. All right. But um, game learning, I think, right. Okay. Let me just close Pano 2 VR for the minute and open up this one. This was... Um, this one's called surviving extinction. And this is something that you get into. Um, this is not something that you can sort of dive into, dive in and out of, but this is a whole learning experience. Um, this was developed um, by a guy called Jeffrey Bruce. Um, he spent a while on it and you'll see why in a second. Um, but basically it's built within Pano 2 VR and where Pano 2 VR has this simple interface, but it also allows you to dive that little bit deeper with JavaScript and other bits and pieces. And that's what he's done to build this. So we can begin the adventure, um, surviving extinction. Uh, we can open up the it's uh, so booklet. Cool. <laughs> We've got different um, getting started, all that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to um, select a, a level. So let's just do something, I don't know, easy. If you want to sort of choose the animal and select. Um, and then you read lots of blurb about all of this. I mean, I'm just skipping through yeah. this, but you know, the effort and the work that's gone into this is phenomenal. Um, and it's used for training, right? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, teaching and, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a very, very powerful tool. Anyway, this is um, basically it. Let's, let's go into it. Um, close that. And basically what it's going to ask me now is to find my little critter which I'm, I'm going to be an iguana. So we've got some animations going on in there. There's my little critter. So this is me. So that's the first task is to find yourself. <laughs> and, and then obviously it then takes you through the, the family tree to, um, to, to now, uh -huh. you know, I'm, I'm, I know I'm, I'm not doing this justice <laughs> at all, but you know, it's very, very complex, very, in it's very cool. Um, yeah. But it's something that, you know, if you're willing to put the time into Pano 2 VR, then you can create things like this. As we saw earlier, you can just drag and drop a folder, boom, done. Yeah. You know, add a skin, done. Or if you want to spend the time, you can do something like this. So, so this is a... Okay. So what about an example that shows video, like the like somebody rock climbing? Um, right. Okay. So let's have a look at... So this um, is also very cool. Right. Okay. Embedding. Uh, right. Embedding video. Right. I do apologise because I have a separate screen that has um, bits and pieces and, and links on it. So that's why you see me looking that way. But here is this is quite a cool example actually. I like this. This starts off with a video um, and then goes into the little planet. This is using the animation editor as well to um, produce um, the walkthrough. So this is it walking through. What I'll do is I'll get to a certain point and we'll stop it. So um, so here we've got the controller and then I can stop. Okay, this is so cool. And there we go. So basically this is a panorama and this section here is a pinned or embedded, as we call it, embedded video. So, so a moving part in a 360 pano. So that's cool. It. <laughs> you know, um, we've got, you know, there's this one's actually got quite a few in here. Um, the guy's gone to town only because he can. Well, this know? is a great um, way to feature, like. Oh, there we go. Climbing. So, yeah. She's. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a looping video. So she's, you know, hanging around, as it were. <laughs> so yeah, there's, yeah, this is this is quite a good example. I was, I yeah, saw this. Um, we have examples on our own website, but you know, as I said, I wanted to see what our customers are doing with the software. Um, Another one now. This is this is one of mine, and I'm I'm going to show this. It's very very basic. <laughs> this was me several years ago having a barbecue. So there's this was from a, a low resolution, you know, uh, 360 one click camera. Um, its claim to fame is that the sound coming from the fire is directional. So if I click the panorama to get the sound up, um, he says I've probably actually now I've turned it down. You can. 
don't know if uh, yeah i've turned it down but basically um as you pan the panorama out you, you would hear the sound fade out of that that's so cool <laughs> so it's all directional the uh -huh. other thing we've pinned in here is um we have another piece of software and this is that it's an object that we've pinned inside the panorama as well so that's that's yeah. more <laughs> adding interactive um, elements within the, the panorama itself. That's Martin's Barbie. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so that's that's me Barbie. Um, we've also got, he says, let's have a look. Um, uh, car showroom, here we go. So this is another example of an object and panorama being used in combination. So here is an object that it's multi-resolution as with our panoramic software, so you can deep, uh, so you can deep zoom. And here, when you click on the car's door, you're now inside the car looking around. So this is a combination of the Object 2 uh -huh. VR and the Pano 2 VR working together, um, which is, and of course, you've got all your little pop-ups. Um, car, the car dealers would love that. <laughs> so another yeah. use of, uh, of the tool. But yeah, so that's, um, that's that. Um, what I did want to show, um, and I will, is the animation editor. Now we spoke about this, but I haven't shown you sort of how easy it is to use. So, you know, because you're thinking, hang on, I'm producing tours um, and producing animations. Is this gonna be difficult? So let's just drag and drop this project back in again. All right. And this time around, here is our animation button up here. So if I click this, you'll see the editor appear at the bottom. So let's just open up Pano 2 VR. And all we do is we add a clip and this is our timeline. And what I can do is say, right, I want to move the panorama over to here. And we click a magic keyframe button and it adds the keyframe. I can move it back over here, magic keyframe button. And I can keep on doing this. In fact, what I can also do is change projection to stereographic and let's do a little planet view Yay. as an example. I love that. <laughs> and then just again, add a magic keyframe. I'm going to rewind this, press play, now it's and going to do there whatever we go. you told it to do. Yeah, very easy. Absolutely. So it's going to do this. Much easier than creating a highlight reel. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, you do this. Now, this is an animation. All right. So I can use this animation within the virtual tour. So I can yep. use this as my auto. Or what we can do is let's just stop that and close the animation editor. Again, I can go to the output, select animation and I can select the resolution of the video, how many frames, um, do I use oversampling, motion blur, all techie stuff, I just select everything because it looks cool. <laughs> um, you can generate your MPEG-4 video, yeah. so set you don't, the resolution. So you don't need or, somebody else to create that for you, like you don't need a matter no, absolutely. Yeah. And once that's done, you hit the go button. We do tend to, it isn't like um, like one of the, because you get something similar on the phones with some of the manufacturers, like the camera manufacturers have apps on phones. Um, what we do is we actually sample the input image for every frame. So we do take a little bit longer to actually create the output, but what actually happens is if you've got a, you know, a gigapixel um, tour, as you zoom in, because we're sampling from the image, those frames are always crystal clear. Uh -huh. um, other software seems to use a, a lower resolution of the image, which looks good when it's zoomed out. But as soon as you start to zoom in too much, it gets a little bit blurry. But because we're always sampling from the input image, it is absolutely crystal clear. And as, a, as an example of this, he says, I think I have got one. Um, where is it? Where is it? Uh, did I... Did I bin it? Did I bin it? Did I bin it? No, I didn't. Here it is. Right. This is uh, this was the synagogue, and this is a, a, a gigapixel image. Now, if I leave it, what it'll do is it'll wait a little bit, and then it'll kick into its auto rotation, which is this produced animation. Now, this is being used within the panorama, mm -hmm. and I can stop this at any time and interact with it. Mm -hmm. Or, as we saw, I can add an animation output and actually right. have this as an MPEG-4 video. Now, where this will differ, as you can see, because it's gigapixel, as we zoom in, it's absolutely crystal clear. And so would that animation as well, because we're sampling each frame from the actual input image, the animation will be absolutely spot on. Wow, powerful tool. 
Absolutely. So many things you could do, but it could also be so easy and simple as well. So that's great. Well, this is it. I mean, you know, it's, it's, you know, I like to call it, you know, a multifaceted piece of software. Thomas refers to it as the, you know, the Swiss army knife for panoramas. Exactly. And, and rightly so. Um, so, you know, so sort of shall, a, a, shall we go to sorry. my favorite one? Oh, go on. All right. The game Which one. Is, the, the game one, right. This was a, a <laughs> someone built this. It's a Halloween game. It's so um, cool. And it, it is quite cool. I must admit, I'm not very good at it, and I don't. <laughs> I wasn't too bad. <laughs> so basically, you start off and you get ghouls. You shoot you them. You shoot get a them. timer. Yeah. And you've you've got to change. <laughs> you've got to change nodes within a certain amount of time, and find your next monster. <laughs> and you're and shooting you shoot monsters, him. and when you shoot them, then a new portal opens up. That's it. And if you fail to do that. So let's let's wait now. If you if you fail to one find the ghoul that you've got to shoot, or then find the um, hot spot to move you to the next level, it's going to time out, and then it'll be game over. You've not done it quick enough. Oh, is... you died. Blood but, yeah. splatter. So, you know, <laughs> well, what can I say? Virtual <laughs> tours, gamification. Um, okay, so that yeah. brings me to my next question. Like, who is your who is this piece of software meant for? So we've got, you can do it with real estate, right? With gaming. Right, absolutely. Um, right, so who can benefit from this? Now, I just wrote one sentence for this, which is <laughs> anyone working with 360 images and high resolution images, because, you know, as you can see, we can do real estate. We can do, uh, you know, it can satisfy the needs for, you know, the higher end professional panoramic photographer doing, you know, multi-resolution and gigapixel you know, it caters for all of that. Um, one of the things I haven't mentioned, which is, you know, um, we 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 used to get asked, well, how many you know, how many panoramas can you put it in there? And and I think I asked Thomas too many times because then he come back and said, well, I actually tried a hundred thousand <laughs> um, feature images, and I'm like, wow. He said, okay. But, but your swap drive needs to be you know, <laughs> big. It needs to be big, so the software itself could handle it, but it was the yeah. it was the hardware. But in in reality, I mean, most tours are you know, I think some of the largest Google tours that I've seen done with our software are a few hundred, like three, four, five hundred. Um, but for virtual tours that you're self hosting on your own server, you know, I think it becomes a, a balancing act of you know what you can put on there and how much server space you're actually going to be yeah. using. So. You know, it's uh, so uh, this but... this can definitely be used by so many different applications. I mean, it's got the interface to Google Street View, so any kind of like stores, uh, commercial, real estate, educational games, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you know, you can use Pano 2 VR to drive all your marketing campaigns, so you know, like using the you know. Using the tools that come with Pano 2 VR, you can build the tour, you can create your thumbnails, you can create your MPEG 4 videos. Yep. Um, we, you know, it's been, you know, I know that we've got agencies um, that actually hire photographers to do all the panoramas, but then they just use the power of the animation editor and build the videos. And that's what they use. They don't actually build virtual tours. Oh, interesting. They, they build videos because, you know, it's a high-end property. It's worth millions. They 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 want to produce what you see. Yes. You know yeah. they they don't want you going off and looking at, you know, something under the toaster in the kitchen. <laughs> they 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 want you looking at the good bits. You know, so they produce the video. Of course, the video is it can go on Instagram. You know, Facebook. It's easy to to embed, where a, a virtual tour is a little bit more difficult. You know, and you know an HTML5 output's a little bit more difficult, but. You know, it's, yeah, what, what can I say? I mean, you know, I've been working with Thomas and I've been working with Garden Home Software and the team uh, since 210. Um, we're a fantastic team. We work well together. And it's just one bit, it's, you know, every day is not work. Every day I come to play and it's Aww. fantastic. You know, And you've been really around is. for a while, so you don't have to worry well, yeah, about, absolutely. you know, them disappearing or, yeah. Cool. All right. So let's talk about how much it costs and how do you right, get it? Okay. Now, this is interesting um, because 
we actually wow people with this. So if yeah, I go this is, to... Okay, this is what I thought. I thought this price was per month. Okay, <laughs> but right, it's not. Okay. So if you go to our <laughs> website, so it's genome.com. So if you so if you want to get on board with Pano 2 VR, so genome.com, select products, Pano 2 VR. I'll always encourage people to try before you buy. So you click try, you can download for all your OSs. Uh -huh. And uh, it's an unlimited um, trial period. Of course, we watermark the outputs and there is limitations on how many nodes you can put in the pro version. Um, but other than that, it's fully functional. When you're happy with it, you click the buy button and then we have two versions. We have a light version, which is not really a tour builder. So if you're doing single images, then the light versions for you. Yeah. If you want to build tours, then the pro version is the one that you want. And um, the pro version obviously has the um, uh, the advantages that with the skin editor that, that that allows you to automatically build the menus with all the thumbnail images, the the light version, you would have to do that manually. But with the pro version, you just go, I want a menu, boom, it's done, you know, all the images are there. Um, and of course, We've looked at pricing and here it is. It's 349, but it's a one off cost. Yeah, one per month or anything once. like that. So you um, so people will spend more than that per month on Matterport. So this is a steal. You pay once. That's that shocked me. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. I think we'll put that to to about six hundred after this, I think. But no. <laughs> but no, it's um yeah, 349. And what this gets you is the license for the version that you're purchasing it for. So as an example, when we had Pano 2 VR version 5, um, depending when you uh, purchased it, um, when when we brought out version 6, uh, we had quite a heavy discount if you'd not had version 5 for too long. In some cases, if it was very, very close to when we brought it out, uh -huh. you know, we... It was a free upgrade. Uh -huh. I'm not going to say that, and everyone's <laughs> I'm well, not doing that think... at all. But, but basically, um, we're always fair to our customers. Yeah. Um, you know, it's even now if you've got version five, and they want to upgrade to version six, there will be a discount there. Even if they've got version four, there will be a discount. Not as much as if you've got five, but there will be a discount. You know, we 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 are not certainly saying, well, you haven't used it for a while, therefore you've got to pay full price. We do, if you then start looking back at Pano 2 VR 2 and Pano 2 VR 3, because that was years ago, and you never <laughs> used it, then, then yeah. you need to buy the full license and the full price. But basically, we tend to look after our customers. Yes. Um, you know, and yeah, the price is there. Um, as you can see, it's 349 for Pano 2 VR. If you want to add additional users, so you want two or three people using it, it's 250 for the additional users. So it's not like you've got to buy the same, you know, like three times three four nine it's now dropping down to yeah. 250 for additional users and this license will last the lifetime of version six all right as and when we bring out a different version as i said you may it, it you know depending on when you purchase six there will be a a, a discounted but it'll be an upgrade you've got to be, there'd be an upgrade price to it but if you're happy with version six and you see no reason why you need to change or upgrade then stick with it the license won't expire that's so, so cool. All right. So very reasonably priced, a very powerful tool. But Martin, what is your secret sauce? <laughs> All right. Well, um, thought about this. Um, yeah, did, did think about this. Um, and I would say our secret sauce is our customers. We've got customers, you know, that are still with us from 15 years ago. You know, and and as you can see through some of the examples I've shown today, yeah. they're a creative bunch. Yeah, they're brilliant, and they prod us. You know, if they want to do something that we can't do, they'll email in and say, "I'd really like the software to do this." So, you know, my job is to one to see if we can do it because sometimes somebody can say, "I'd really like the software to do this," and then I find a way of doing it, or we find a way of doing it, um, or if I can't then we write up a feature request that goes over to the, you know, to, to Thomas and Christoph, the two guys that are on the keyboard. And um, basically if we can, we can add the, the feature sooner rather than later, but sometimes a feature, you know, it requires more work. Therefore it gets added to perhaps another release, uh, perhaps a, you know, a different 
version so i don't know it's from five to six or six to seven or something like that but generally i think our secret source is our customers and the fact that you know they've stayed loyal they love us and we love them okay but but think about this why are they loyal customers and why are they why are you saying that they're your secret sauce because the bottom line is you and your team are very receptive re re very responsive and have produced an, a tool that's useful so I think your secret sauce is really you guys. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I will bow to your superior knowledge on this one. You know, from 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 the box I'm sitting in, um, it sometimes it's hard to sort of jump out and look back in. But yeah, I, I think if you were to look at Garden Gnome Software as a company, you know, we're very approachable. Um, you know, you listen to your know. customers. You don't try to screw them over on things that you absolutely. do absolutely you know yeah. and yeah you know and it's like you know people say to me oh do you do sort of black friday deals and things like that and you know and it's like well no we don't because we've set our prices to be the best we can yeah all the time yeah you know other manufacturers have you know other man called manufacturers but other producers of tour software have you know are higher priced and they then have these discount days or they can offer people discount if they're doing whatever, you know, but, you know, I see, you know, my own personal point of view is, you know, if I'd purchased big bucks for a piece of software and then found out that, you know, the guy down the road's got it a bit cheaper because of whatever, because it's a certain day of the week, then I wouldn't <laughs> be too impressed. So I think, you know, Thomas's ethos with let's get the price as cheap as we can because it's going to be, it's as, as we've already said, it's a one-off price. You pay yep. this once. And that now, that now has got to last us until the next development, until the next upgrade. So we're not screwing people yeah, for cash. You're not. You know, it's, it, and you're it's, listening it. and you care. Wow. And and Thomas created this out of a need. So he wasn't in a, va a like a vacuum creating a tool that nobody wants. It's a tool that's very useful and very powerful. So if you haven't tried it, I would really suggest trying it. It's gardengnome.com slash Pano2VR, well, right? Yeah, or just genome.com and click on products. Okay, genome.com slash on pick up, select products in Pano2VR. Yeah, try it. So. You can you can try it for free. So if you haven't Absolutely. tried it, try it. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow, this has been terrific. I've learned a lot, and I love well, all um, your examples. <laughs> well, uh, you know, again, thank all our customers really because they're the ones that have created this. All we've done is provided the tools. It's been their creativity that has put it together. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and and also I just feel that you know we've only really just scratched the surface. Um, what I will say before I go is on our website. Um, we've already talked about the documentation. We've already talked about the videos. Uh -huh. um, I've heard in the past because of our skin editor can allow you to use JavaScript and code if you want to. Uh -huh. um, sometimes people get hung up on that and think, oh, you've got to be a coder to use it. Or, you know, you really don't. You've seen that. You yes, really don't I agree. Have to know anything. So under documentation, we have webinars. And in March, when the first lot of lockdown happened, um, we started doing webinars and we were doing because people were stuck at home and, you know, people were twiddling their thumbs <laughs> and photographers were out of work. We decided to go, you know, all in and we were producing a webinar a week. It was tough. You know, I'm happy to say that we've now backed out to, to, to one a fortnight. So there's one next week. But, you know, but we were doing one a week and, you know, and we were getting some big hits on the initial webinars. Um, with people coming on and, you know, and the feedback we were getting was fantastic. But what we also did was record them all. The whole repository of back catalogue, if you like, is yeah. here. Um, you know, if we go back to, to number four, what we did was we, at first, we were sort of targeting users that already. But because of lockdown, and we saw, you know, a huge increase in customers coming in that had not used the software. Um, you know, they, you know, people have more time sitting at home. So what we did, we started this 101 series. So the very first one, 101 getting started, and then we go 101 hotspots. And, cool. you know, so if you, so if you, if you go back to 101 getting started and move forward, I think it's about the third or fourth webinar we get to before we even get to the skin editor. 
So, you know, it, right. you know, and, and we've already built tours. We've already created stuff right. that, you know, realtors can use and we've hardly touched anything, you yeah. know? So, you know, and I would encourage people to not only look at the documentation, but check out the webinars. And you can well. hang out with Martin too in the webinar. <laughs> Who wouldn't oh. want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually the whole team. And it's it's really funny because, you know, when we do a webinar, again, it's 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 me up front and 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 Karen um part of the team, she she joins me because you know I can't concentrate on what I'm doing and reading questions. So Karen's reading questions and she's collating the questions. And her job is very, very <laughs> difficult because she's got to try and collate the questions that are relevant yeah. for the webinar. I've been there. Because, I've done that. It's hard. You know, because yeah. people ask so many different questions. Yeah. And it's like, well, <laughs> yeah. We're sort of recording this. Yeah. So we want it relevant to yeah. the webinar. So that's her job. And of course I have, you know, Thomas and Christoph and like that and, 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 and the guys in the background. So if <laughs> I, if I am asked a question, I don't know, I have an iPad that sits in there <laughs> that's, that's direct link to them. I call it my teletype. <laughs> and basically, you know, if I'm asked a question, I go like, oh, I don't know that. And all of a sudden, tit, 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 and Thomas or Christoph will save Aww. me. So it's great. So cool. it's, the, yeah. it's, it's a whole team effort. Yeah. So check it out really the webinars. Is. There's just a lot of documentation. So check it out. If you haven't already, it's genomed. Wait. It's up here. It's up here. So, um, so uh, genome. So HTTPS colon genome. forward slash forward ggnome.com. Genome.com. Yep. Is the website. I'll put a link to that in the description because I can never remember. Cool. All righty. Well, thank you so much for spending your time with us this morning. I learned a lot and I hope everybody watching has too. Uh, I do want to say uh, thanks everybody for watching. Please stay safe um, and I will see you all next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.